so I'm ready to depart so I've got everything done here during the two days in Horta apart from getting a haircut <laughs> I even could paint at the wall so that was good yesterday and the riggers came yesterday evening as well here from Mid-Atlantic Yacht Service and they did a good job one little recommendation to loosen the inner shroud which I did this morning as well so yeah all fine all good so I'm heading towards Brazil and we have a look at the details of that cruise uh, later on when I'm at sea. Ich wünsche dir gute Reise. Dankeschön. Wir verfolgen dich auf Instagram und Facebook. <lacht> ja, Dann lass es dir gut gehen. Ne? Ja, das mache ich. Bye bye. Running. It's now my second day after I have left Horta and I'm now 25 days sailing since I have left New York obviously it was a stop in Horta for a couple of days the wind was very strong during the night about force 5 to 6 and I was sailing south with wind from the east and over the day it has become a little bit weaker so wind is now force 4 from east to east south east so I'm beating the wind at the moment we have done roughly 174 nautic miles and I try to get a little bit more to the east because over the next few days the wind is better in the east south of me is a calm zone with light wind and also thunderstorms I like to prevent that and hopefully I can get as much as needed to the east to catch the better wind the sailing cruise has a few challenges I mean one is that uh, we have usually large karma zones as I'm facing now here in the south between the Azores and the Cape Verdean Islands that's one thing but I think I have a good plan for that as I explained and the second one is uh, we are in the high time for the hurricanes and the hurricane season obviously we are not in the hurricane zone but the area around the Cape Verdean Islands is a kind of a birthplace for those storms and they start there as a tropical wave which is a little low with strong wind gales thunderstorms a lot of rain so I need to deal with it actually I try to prevent to get in either I change course a little bit uh, to the west or to the east or take speed out it depends a little bit on the weather forecast uh, because that is too far away and not shown yet but they develop from there to or can develop from there to storms and hurricanes when they are moving to the west or northwest the next little challenge is the intertropical convergency zone which is a calm zone between the Cape Verdean Islands and Fernando de Noronha. There's not much wind, it's very calm. There's a high likelihood of thunderstorms and I will go through there with the engine. I have a little bit more diesel with me, 330 liters versus 250 liters in the past. And that gives me a higher range, about 650 nautic miles, and uh, that's the plan to use that and getting through that zone. After that, there are currents around the equator going to the east, north of that, and further south to the west. And I like to prevent getting wind against current. And also, the trade wind of the southern hemisphere likes to change direction to the south and sometimes to the southwest. So that will not be my favor. So that all needs to be dealt with. Yeah, quite a challenging sailing cruise. So it will be exciting. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the next yeah, three to four weeks because I think it will be about 
2,400 to 2,600 nautic miles from here where we are at the moment and I expect that it will take that time but uh, yeah, it will be challenging but exciting as well. No fishing luck so far so the lure is out the second day. The good thing is here is no sargasso so it can hang out the whole day. So put it out in the morning, take it in the evening or sometimes in between when I have a little nap. Yeah, let's keep fingers crossed. I have something on the hook. So that's a tuna. A little bit longer than 70 centimeters. Oh, what a beast. I bought a new knife, very sharp. Cut off the filet. I've reefed the sails. It's not much wind at the moment. The engine is running as well. So there's a lot of rain around me. I can't escape. Rain is around me. So and not much wind. So I reefed the sails because uh, I think uh, afterwards I will have twice as I have now. So to be on the safe side. is back, force 5, and I'm in the middle here of the rain areas. Here they are, nine stakes, two a little bit smaller, but great, great success. Mm, that's looking great. Yeah, heavy squall, 40 knots, out of the blue sky. Yeah, it's thunderstorm as well. I see lightning. Yeah, not very nice, so uh, it's a little bit chaotic here on the deck. A few squalls with thunderstorms ahead. I didn't expect to get in there, but the uh, wind has turned. No, um, getting closer. That is the escape course. That looks alright. Yeah, what a night. So many thunderstorms and squalls. Unbelievable. So I was escaping the whole night until 5 o'clock and then I had one hour sleep. Yeah, and then I got up at 6 and uh, again, squall, 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 so I had to escape. But fortunately, not on the engine, so I can sail. And here at port side, there are again some, some rain showers and squalls with a lot of wind. Hopefully we leave them behind and they don't hit us and hopefully I can catch up with some sleep today. The sun is out, it looks much brighter now, but I was battling with those squalls and thunderstorms until early afternoon, so I tried to prevent them, which I could successfully because uh, I have the radar. Yeah, now the wind is not that strong, wind force 3 at the moment, but we are, we are on course, so no problem, and I go into my bunk now. I need to sleep, so sometimes I need to sleep. <laughs> I had not much sleep last night, so now is the time. We are beating the wind, so at the moment force 4 to 5, so I'm running 35 degrees to the apparent wind. And when the wind goes a little bit up, then I go to 32. Because the wind has turned to southeast and I don't want to go too much to the west at this moment in time. So keeping on course south. 
Yeah, I'm very tired, so I'm looking forward to my bank. <laughs> I'm sailing now for more than a week from Porta in the Azores to Fernando de Noronha in Brazil. I'm about 875 nautical miles behind and we are not too far away from the Cape Verdean Islands. So about 555 nautic miles to there and to Fernando de Noronha it is about uh, 1,900 nautic miles. So still a bit to go. So actually we are sailing uh, very close to a tropical wave which uh, looked a few days ago that uh, we could hit that but uh, now it seems that uh, we are letting it going through ahead of us and uh, we are just in the outside and are not affected by strong wind. So here it is. So the core of that uh, tropical wave is south-southwest of me and I'm sailing south. And as we can see, I cannot be that slowly because afterwards there will be a calm and then there is some wind from northeast. Yeah, still a, a long way to cruise. I'm top fit. Yeah, the weather could be a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> We cannot choose that. Morning. running well the night was good too but I need to get awake so I need coffee Best thing in the morning is the coffee. <laughs> we are very close to the tropical wave, so I can see clouds ahead and also starboard ahead. The whole system is moving northwest with a speed of around seven knots. We are cruising south with six knots, so maybe if we are lucky, it all has gone through when we are down there and maybe we are not hit. Otherwise, we get some rain and maybe few gusts or a little bit more wind 
We'll see. The new weather update is available, so we have a look. And we download that. It's looking well, all is there. We are here where the green marker is, and here we get some warning messages. And so the tropical wave has been upgraded to a tropical depression and here also some some warning messages here with a deeper look on the development we are where the green marker is and we are on the outskirts here of the tropical depression and the core of it is about southwest from us the whole system is moving northwest so I'm cruising south, not on the direct course to Fernando de Noronha, which is a yellow line. So we are going south and what we can see here is the wind gets lighter on the back side of that and then we need to be careful not ending up in a car and sailing south, yeah, very light winds there. And then we are near the Cape Verdean Islands and then we set course southwest something like that we will see now it's breakfast time mm. <laughs> Good luck with fishing, so a nice bonito here. The nice portions I would say are about four meals. Really great. I need to clean this one. So I'm having tuna with rice and paprika. The weather is playing along, bright and sunny. I'm sailing downwind, wing on wing. So the whisker pole is fully extended. At the moment that's fine, because uh, yeah, Jumbo is sailing and cruising very calm at the moment, so not much movement in the boat. But as soon as uh, the waves are getting stronger and uh, we are rolling a little bit, I need to shorten the whisker pole, otherwise it's too risky, it might break. We are about 150 nautic miles away from Cape Verdean Islands. We are not stopping there. I'm currently sailing south southwest, so I'm going to pass the islands in the west. Another tropical wave is developing currently southeast of the Cape Verdean Islands and this is moving in my direction, so we'll meet that tomorrow. But that should bring good wind to us. But afterwards it might be a little bit tricky to get good wind because those lows are running through and uh, disturbing the wind systems here so i might end up with some lighter wind but i uh, will see but for the moment all great
all fine today. So the tropical wave is moving as expected. So I have good wind at the moment and that should continue for the next one and a half days. And then I should be south west west southwest of the first Cap Verdean island and then I'm expecting some heavy rain but that's good that uh, will clean the boat <laughs> we will see but I think it's looking pretty good for the moment The night was okay, we are still beating the wind, very hard, very high. There's a squall here port side, so I'm not sure if it is going to catch me, but I need to check on the radar. Oh yeah, there are the squalls. It's running well. We are using the southeast wind and we are beating it as best as possible and sailing southwest. We have left the last tropical wave which got upgraded first to depression and then when we had left it to a storm and has been named Margot. We have left that behind and now we are sailing in the so-called inner tropical convergence zone but we have wind because the storm is pulling so much air into the north that the south east trade wind is even coming up to here and we have wind at the moment we also have left the Cap Verdean islands behind they are 150 nautic miles astern the closest island our current position is 13 degrees north and 26 degrees west so my preferred course would be south and i set a waypoint at 6 degrees north and 26 degrees west because i need to take into account that the southeast trade wind is blowing 120 to 140 degrees so if i'm going too much to the west when i'm hitting that then the angle to fernando de noronia would be too bad so this point in the south about 430 nautic miles and that means I would have an angle of 70 to 80 degrees to the true wind and that is quite convenient from my standpoint. I might not hit exactly 26 west, it might be a little bit further to the west but around about that area. So that's the current plan. Yeah, nice sailing at the moment here but maybe until tomorrow evening and then I need to use the engine for a few days or the wind will have disappeared. It also might be that uh, I'm not finding the trade wind on 6 degrees north, it might go further south and then I obviously need to run that distance on the engine as well. So I've started with 330 liters diesel and have used about 40 liters and uh, with the remaining fuel I can do about 550 nautic miles, that means I'm well covered even if the trade wind is coming a little bit uh, later in the south. No, all good, all fine. Yeah, I have the lure out and I hope that I can catch a fish. So I was very lucky in the in the past on that cruise. But uh, now it's time for another fish. But uh, let's see.
engine is already running, so yeah, three before, but from south and uh, we are heading south. Looking at the clouds, so we see a different picture than uh, the other days. Yeah, we are now in the intratropical convergence zone in the calms, and we see some cumulus clouds, some rain showers at the horizon. Yeah, hopefully I'm through that rather sooner than later. That's how it is looking in the calms. Yeah, cloudy, rain showers, fortunately no thunderstorm. Yeah, I need to run it on the engine for the next three days. <laughs> That's no fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can stand in between. Unfortunately, yesterday evening, a wave came over the bow and the hatch was open. <laughs> yeah. So everything got wet here. Uh, it's almost dry. So actually I moved out. And slept on the, on the bench here in the salon. Which has uh, worked quite well. It was okay. Yeah, obviously it's all a little bit chaotic here at the moment, but as soon as the mattresses are dry, I will move back in. Wind force 6 from northeast, so I set the jet up. It's raining heavily. Wind force 5. Uh, maybe a little bit more now. I have both sails out. Sailing beam reach. Not sure if you can see that. Yeah, it's necessary to use those times when there's a little bit wind because of the squalls. And here the squalls are not that heavy because the starting point is low. Yeah, let's see how the next few days will go. Nice wind, good speed and good course. Yeah, sometimes I have wind from that direction or another direction, so it's a moment here from the west or west southwest. So that's good. So, selling south, enjoying that so the engine can have a break and can pause. So I'm drying the sheet here, it's a little bit wet, but not too much and then I can put it back. So everything was dry, so I put the sheets newly on and can sleep tonight here and hope that no further wave is coming through here. <laughs> Lovely morning here in the calm, so I'm sailing more than I'm running the boat on the engine <laughs> in the calms. Unbelievable. So we have good wind now for about 36 hours. In between I had to run the engine for a couple of hours. But last night I could sail through and uh, yesterday afternoon as well. Really good. Actually I'm now south of 8 degrees north and not too far away from the trade wind. Maybe it takes me another half a day to get there. At the moment here, there's a rain zone at uh, port side. And the good weather is starboard, starboard ahead. And that's where the wind is coming from. So I assume that I get the good weather. 
the Gassum algae is here as well. Even here in that area, very far to the east, uh, there was a larger carpet which I sailed through. Yeah, I think it uh, will get worse over the next few years and we will find it more and more, unfortunately. We are a bit slowly since uh, we hit that Sakasum. I had to release the sails because the wind was up to 15, 16 knots and then full sails is too much here. Direction is southwest and slightly turning to south southwest even, which means our course is no longer south. We are sailing at the moment south southeast, yeah, more towards southeast. I'm also approaching the area with the equatorial current which goes to the east so it's the, the other way not the, the normal one which is going to the west and that is pushing us to the east even a little bit more so yeah can't do anything about it I have to take it as it, as it comes and uh, how it is Full sails, I'm sailing into the night. Don't need to use the engine, that's good. And sunset will be soon over there. I'm out of the inner tropical convergency zone, thanks God. This morning I had blue sky, wind from the south, for three to four, and the evening is beautiful as well. Yeah, there's one darker cloud, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think there's no rain. No, so perfect. It was such a long time because it started south of the Cape Verdean Islands at 13 degrees north. And this morning I was on uh, 1.5 degrees north, so all the way down those 11 and a half latitudes I was in the carbs, in the, in the tropical convergence zone. And it was 900 nautical miles. Fortunately, I could sail most of it. I had just to use the engine for 68 hours and used about 150 liters of diesel, which is less than half I started with. So that's a very positive, but the last few days taking against the wind and then the rain and ah, it was it was so exhausting and uh, the morale here on board was not very high, but now good spirits, we are out of that, really great. And now I will see land very soon, surprisingly, because the archipelago St. Peter and St. Paul is yeah, almost in my course line uh, because of the wind from the south, I could not get on direct course to Fernando de Noronha and got a little bit more to the west and that means I'm coming close to the islands. Unfortunately my electronic chart doesn't show all the details, it's just a little larger dot and that marks the land area and then some blue colored areas where it is a little bit more shallow but I don't know exactly how shallow. So fortunately I could download from the internet because my styling is, is working very well. I could download that from the internet, an older chart, and at least I could get the coordinates, so the position of the island and uh, mark that in my electronic chart and make sure that I keep south of, the, of that point. But that should work, but very exciting. I think after darkness I will see the lighthouse. All good.
To Fernando de Noronha, I have about 350 nautical miles left. So that means less than three days. I should be there. So in three days time, hopefully I already have dropped the anchor, did customs clearance and uh, will be sitting in a nice restaurant. <laughs> we will see. But all good. Yeah, I just saw the light of the lighthouse. A little bit weak, but yeah, at least uh, I saw it. I'm very close to the equator and we'll cross it soon. Over there is the equator. When you are crossing first time the equator at sea, so in the air doesn't count, so I flew a few times with a plane across the equator so but now it's first time at sea it's a old tradition seafarers tradition that you get baptized with seawater and that's what I'm doing now obviously there's no one else who can can do that so I, I need to do it myself <laughs> and secondly you send your wishes to Neptune and also give him some high percentage alcohol so I will use my white rum from Martinique and that's what I'm doing now as well. Yeah. Great baptism. So, my best white rum from Martinique. Oops. <laughs> so, that's for Neptune. So Neptune, I wish fair winds, not too high waves, good sea currents, no thunderstorms at sea, not so many squalls, no grounding. <laughs> then uh, yeah, nice anchor spots, not too rolly, and also I wish uh, having good luck uh, with fishing. So Neptune, that's for you. Yeah, very nice tradition, let's see. I'm approaching Fernando de Noronha, it's not too far away, about 20 nautic miles, so I guess another four hours sailing. I think I will see it maybe in two hours. The island is not that high, so it can't be seen from far in the distance. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to the arrival and first of all I will pull up the courtesy flag and the queue flag. Now I can see the hills of Fernando de Noronha at the horizon in the mist. So great. After more than 3,000 nautical miles from the Azores and far more than 5,000 nautical miles from New York. Oh, it's so great.
12 meter i dropped the anchor here at nine meters depth and put 40 meters chain out yeah, i'm a little bit close to one of the boats here it's a mooring boy but i think it will work yeah now i'm getting the dinghy ready this is a little port of fernando de Noronha. yeah yeah a lot going on here tied down the dinghy down there I've reported here at the harbor office and uh, the harbor master to, to go the details and also the guy from immigration came he took the passport and the ship documents and I will get that back at uh, five o'clock and I also ordered a car for tomorrow to get everything done which I need to do so getting my fuel my provisions driving a little bit around Yeah, all has gone well, so I collected my passport and I've cleared in and cleared out at the same time for Friday clearing out, so all good. To finalize the day here on board of Jumbo, the well-deserved beer for the successful anchoring and the successful cruise and sailing. So it was about 3050 nautic miles from Horta down here and more than 5,400 nautical miles from New York. So I think this beer <laughs> is one of the most, mostly well-deserved beers I had. So, cheers. So the rest is okay as well. So I'm, as I said, I'm cleared in and out at the same time for Friday. I will enjoy a few days here on the island, have a car for a couple of days so so far so good I uh, will enjoy the time here I'm driving with my buggy around the island and have a look on some of the nice beaches nice restaurants. Stairs are going down to the beach. Pico, the highest rock here on the island. The next stand. Beautiful beaches here, impressive landscape. I'm now here at the tourist center. I wanted to buy a ticket for the national park, but it should cost 358 real and uh, just for a few hours there. It uh, doesn't make sense. So that would be valid for 10 days. So it's, it's obviously a good deal, but uh, for me it doesn't make sense. Good morning, actually it's a lovely morning. Dolphins are on the boat, really cool, second day now, yesterday as well. I had a look at Fernando de Noronha yesterday, did some sightseeing, great island, I like it. And today I'm yeah, doing preparations for the next cruise down to Cape Town. I would like to leave this evening around sunset, maybe a little bit earlier. The divers are coming this morning to clean the hull because there's something which has grown on, some barnacles and algae. It's important as well because you want to have a clean hull when you are cruising 
four and a half thousand nautical miles. That's what I estimate uh, because it uh, gives a little bit more speed. So the divers are here, so I picked them up from the harbor and they're now under the boat and cleaning. 